Hey, everybody, just a quick kind of programming note here. Um, as you can probably already tell, uh, I'm a little under the weather. I, I thought about kind of pushing this episode until my voice recovered. Um, I decided <laughs> through the magic of editing that I could just kind of get it done. And um, a big reason being that this this episode, one of four that we're doing on Vesuvio, um, is just really near and dear to my heart. Um, the place, I think, means a lot to myself and to thousands, tens of thousands of locals and visitors. And it's just a really special place that we want to celebrate. So, okay, here we go. I'd been coming to the city a lot because like I said, we lived in Orange County and we all didn't like it. So we used to come to San Francisco all the time. Like we would always come um, to North Beach specifically. So I always kind of felt like I grew up in this neighborhood a little bit. Like we'd come for Thanksgiving, we'd come for Christmas. That was Joanna Leochi, longtime Vesuvio bartender and creator of the bar's Wacky Wednesday music shows in Kerouac Alley. I'm Jeff. And this is Storied San Francisco, a podcast all about the people and places that make this city what it is. I met Joanna to record at Vesuvio on a beautiful mid-October day. The weather had just changed to chilly mornings and nights with warm, summer-like afternoons. As she came into the bar, Joanna offered me a beer. Anchor steam, I said, please and thank you. We settled into the booth upstairs where we've recorded several guests on this show including Joanna's boss, Janet Clyde, whom we featured last week in parts one and two of our episodes on Vesuvio Cafe. Please go back and check those out if you haven't already. Meanwhile, here's Joanna. So um, I'm from Newport, Rhode Island, and my uh, I have an older sister. She lives in Brooklyn, and she's in theater. Okay. So we're a very an big, actor, or uh, she is a stage manager, okay. which makes Ooh. which is very uh, on point. Since I'm sort of the staff manager here, we're both like little ringleaders of circuses. Yes, um, and we're just OCD enough to make it work. I think <laughs> <laughs> very it's very funny. Uh, we have similar jobs, except not at all. But, and by coastal, um, yeah, and by coastal. She's in Brooklyn, <laughs> so um, so. So, yeah, I was born in Newport, and... So is, uh, is Newport the other? Because there's Providence, and Yeah, and there's, there's Newport. Newport. And I mean, that's pretty, it, much, yeah. that's pretty much that's pretty much it. But, yeah, I guess technically I was born in Providence, because that's where the hospital is. But oh, I, right. I grew up in Newport, um, and we moved to California when I was a kid, because my dad got a job. My dad oh. was a music writer for okay. a really long time. Oh, um, and what my, kind of music? He was a rock critic. Nice. Yeah, for a long time. He actually wrote the Lou Reed memorial piece for the New York Times when oh, Lou Reed wow. died. So, yeah, that was wow. really, it was cool. It was a very cool situation. Did he come out to work for Rolling Stone? No, or? he was oh. working for the LA Times. Okay. He basically, um, it's a funny, it's a very funny Rhode Island story, but it, the short story, the short version is he worked for the Providence Journal and they had invested in this hotel and they wanted him to go review it because they wanted people to go. And he basically said in his review, this hotel is really nice, but you have to have a lot of money. And mm. in Providence in 1983, seven no uh, one had any money right, um, right. so they told him that if he ran the article they would fire him oh, and he <laughs> ran the article and they fired him okay. and it was uh because rhode island obviously is so small and he had been this well-known rock critic um they it got media attention and he got offered the job as entertainment editor at the la times yes. so we all moved to southern california which was one very weird closes um, yeah very things. very weird we lived in orange county um Ooh. yeah and coming from rhode island to orange county was very odd we all left as soon as we could yeah. um which is fine i mean orange county is a fine place but i think just culturally it was very very different um my He's... mom was a pediatric nurse for a really long time okay. so she Picked up nursing again, obviously, in Southern California. Yeah. Um, the best part of that story, though, was when when my dad got fired, um, all of these people made these pins that said, Save Tony Leochi, okay. and they would wear them all around Providence, but they spelled Leochi wrong, <laughs> which is so Rhode Island. It's like... And if he's a journalist. Yeah, it's like, and, well, they they did, and it too. wasn't even, you know, it was completely yeah. unintentional, and the best, and I always say, like, we got to find one of those pins, but, yeah. you know, that so was... So Tony Leochi was yeah, his name. Yeah, mm -hmm. Okay, when you said, when you say 
we all left. You meant Orange County. Um, yeah. As soon so as you, could, you mean you and your my sister went. Uh, okay. My sister moved to go to NYU after high school. Uh, I moved to Europe the day after I graduated, and then I moved up here. Wow. And my parents live in Berkeley because my dad ended up transferring to the San Jose Mercury, and my mom oh. worked as um, a public health official for the city of Berkeley. Oh, shit. So there's, okay. my parents are still in the East Bay, and then I'm here, and my sister's still in Brooklyn. Oh, nice. Yeah. Can we talk quickly about Europe? Because, like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's where I started. The, the day after high the school? The day after I graduated, Holy pretty crap. much. Um, I, that's awesome. I had been in Europe for about four minutes, and 9-11 uh, happened oh, while okay. I was in yep. a port in London yep. um, on the way to Amsterdam. So that was super weird. Um, I'd planned on being gone for a while, and I think that sort of um, it was just a really weird time obviously mm -hmm. and I was like should I come home I don't know what's going on mm -hmm. and my mom I remember I called her from like a pay phone and she said uh absolutely don't come home like you know there's just just enjoy your time like <laughs> I worked like full-time my senior year of high school so I could go to Europe oh. and um we had gone to Ireland when I was, uh, I think I was like eight or nine for my mom's birthday. Okay. And I decided on that trip that I wanted to be a bartender in Dublin. When specifically. you were eight? I think I was like eight or nine. I was oh, in third shit. grade, so okay. probably nine. And whenever people would ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I would say I want to be a bartender in Ireland. And they were like, huh, that's so, so funny. And I was like, what? Crazy. That's what I want to do. Um, and then I went to Ireland. And the day I got there, I dropped off my backpack at a hostel. And I lied. And I got a bartending job. So that's nice. where I started bartending when I was in 18. Dublin. In Dublin. I yep, it. At a place called O'Shea's Merchant, which is nicer now. Oh. but was such a shithole. Um, it's a famously across the street from the Brazen Head in Dublin, which is like a much more established bar. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was, I, I bartended in the like restaurant area. And then there was one night where someone didn't show up to their bar shift. And okay. I of course was like this sassy 18 year old, you know? Yeah. And I said to my gigantic kitchen manager, Keith, who is like, possibly the scariest man I've ever met. Um, I worked with him and this guy named Vincent who used to like smoke cigarettes and let the ash get really long oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. as he poured pints and I would just sit and watch it and be rad. like, oh God. Yeah, it's it was actually kind of great. but it's also and he, kind of a throwback. And he, I thought he was yeah. like so old, he, but he was one of those guys, he looked like, he could have either been like 42 or 92. Like right. you just couldn't tell. So yeah. Yeah. Um, so they, I overheard them saying that the bartender didn't show up and I said, well, I can do it. And they said, we don't have women bartend in the oh, bar good. area. Oh, great. But I, of course, because, you know, I was an 18 year old, like whatever was like, well, I'm saying I can do it. So either I do it or no one does it, I guess, right. or something along those yeah. lines. So I did it and I did a good job. So I actually was the first lady to bartend in that bar. Um, however, I did one night <laughs> make a really horrible mistake and I learned my lesson. They were definitely right that I wasn't allowed, the one stipulation was I wasn't allowed to come out from behind the bar to um, pick up glassware. Okay. Because it got really rowdy, which it did oh. get very rowdy. It was predominantly men. Sure. It was in an area that was a lot of like construction workers. Like it was right. just like tough Irish guys. Um, yeah. And one one night it was really busy and I was, you know, again, like, well, I can do whatever I want. Yeah. So I went out and I stacked a bunch of pint glasses and was going to bring them back behind the bar to, um, to wash them. And this guy kind of came behind me and like picked me up by my waist, like with his arm. So he picked me up like this and all the pint glasses shattered all over the ground. And Keith, the scariest man I've ever met, jumped over the bar. Keith was also huge. He was probably like 6'10", like not oh an exaggeration. Okay. He was a massive human. Jumped over the bar, they grabbed the guy, and then like 10 guys just took him outside. And I am fairly positive they like beat the shit out of him. So not only was I horrified that I had like been grabbed, but I was like, don't kill the guy! <laughs> and it scared the shit out of me so much that I never broke another rule in the bar. You never that. went from beyond. I never left behind the bar unless I went to the bathroom. And if I did, I went through the kitchen and I used the bathroom in the uh, restaurant. <laughs> well, uh, for, for listeners, I just want to um, confirm that you are right now not behind the bar. Yeah, no, so no. So it hasn't scarred you for life. No, no. Okay. <laughs> but that bar, I never I never did anything that they told me not to. Like, I yeah. very quickly learned that it was like, it was a good lesson because it was like, I thought they were just kind of being assholes and like misogynistic right. and, you know, whatever. Um, and... And then I, I very quickly learned, like, no, they actually were just, like, looking out for kind me. Of for and, your I, own good. and I kind of need to listen. Like, and that's, that's yeah. a big lesson in bars is, like, 
you, there, if there are people that have been there longer than you, listen to what they say. Because right. as long as they're not dicks, they're probably just looking out for you. Correct. So yeah, they yeah. know the lay of the land. Yeah, the, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. they were very right. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have done it. Was it really 10 on one? I think it was maybe like eight. It was a lot. And there was this. And so basically the back door of the bar was on this alley. And it was just sort of a notorious thing like that. People would get in bar fights out there all the time. Um, I mean, I, I'm, sure they, I'm sure they weren't kind to him. It's an I'll Irish it that way. bar in Ireland. In so, Ireland. Like, it's yeah, an actual yeah, pub like, where come, people... Comes people, with the territory. Yeah, people... There weren't a lot of ladies in there, like yeah. I said. Sunday nights, they would have an Irish band, and then, like, a lot of people would go in. Like, a lot more women would be in there, and me and my friends would go in then. But when I was yeah. working, it was pretty much... Um, it was a lot of guys, but yeah. it was also you know 2001 or right. whatever that was. Yeah, so Which it was you know doesn't 20, feel like 22 that long years. Ago, it doesn't, but it, but, but it is. But you know, it's I work with people here that were like born in 2001, so oh, right. <laughs> not really actually, but close, close enough. Okay, this episode's making me feel I know, real right? we are old. A thousand. <laughs> So how long did you stay in, in Dublin um, or in Europe there, in general? I, well, I traveled around for a while before, and then I stayed in Dublin. I was there for maybe five months, and then I came home because it was Christmas, and I didn't have a work visa or anything. So, oh, okay. But I've gone back since. Um, I've gone back with my family, and um, I'm hoping to go back within the next few years. I love Ireland. Just to it's visit. Just, yeah, not yeah, to just work to hang out. Okay. And yeah, okay. it's it's great. I love the people there. I love the culture there. I think yeah. um, I've been reading a lot, actually, that in, in uh, Ireland and England, there's kind of this pandemic going on of corporations buying up all the old bars uh, and then making everything cheaper lame. so that people go there because the economy isn't great and like it yeah sounds american it sounds so american i was like you <laughs> fucks so yeah. um yeah so there's definitely a part of me that's like oh if that's happening to a lot of places i would like to go sooner than later right just, you know right or everything cool gets wiped out but yeah. hopefully that won't happen right um, so that's Thing. So, did your you said your your family, your mom and dad moved up here? Mm-hmm. Did that happen while you were away? Or no, like, it was like after-, after. My dad moved up here, and then um, because of my mom was trying to sell our house, and then because of nine eleven, that wasn't really possible. So I went back and lived with her, and then we down came in back. Orange County. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. For not very long, luckily, because yeah. I was very. I was like, what am I doing here again? Yeah, yeah. Right. I even I still go there. Like my best friend still lives there, and she she and her wife have three kids, and they're my god kids. So like. I go to see them, but I just, it's, you know, I think anywhere though, I was talking to a friend about it the other day. Cause I had just, I just did a big road trip, like all over California. And he said, Oh man, like I go back to that part of the, of California and I just hate it. And I said, yeah. I think that's just kind of, that happens when you grow up in a place like you it's either love it from. or you really don't yeah. like it. And I think being a transplant there, I never fit in there. And I just always had a tough time there. I still go back and I'm like, what is happening? I think you're right, but I think with the OC, it's yeah. also the OC. I mean, so, it like, is. And people it's who very, aren't from there get it. Politically like, is very different. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like, ethnically is pretty, mm-hmm. it's pretty, uh, yeah. It's, you Gallon know, of it's, milk. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. it's it's not a bad place. It just was not a place for me, for sure. Right, right. I, I, I yeah. I so did you come it. up here because your family, because your mom and... Um, partially, or, or, I came up, I went to SF State here. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. You're another. So, mm-hmm. It's the most common thread through six years of doing this podcast. Oh, yeah. And, a lot and, of and I went people. there too. Like, yeah. yeah. It's like yeah, it's, yeah. It's the common yeah. denominator. I started out, I actually went to, I started going, I really fucked up in high school. Obviously, I was in Orange County. I didn't like high school. I was like playing in like a riot girl band and all my oh, friends nice. were like weird junkies. What and do you I play? just wasn't. I just sang. I sang in a band nice. called Julia Warhola after Andy Warhol's oh, mom. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. For a while. Um, nice. But we had to break up because everyone in the band started doing heroin. And mm-hmm. I was like, mm. And we were practicing in like my parents' living room, and I was like, oh, yeah. I think they're gonna catch on that this is happening. Um, <laughs> so came back, moved up here. Um, I went to school actually in the Peralta system in the East Bay, mm-hmm. which was great. I, I I loved like I went to Laney College, went to Vista. Um, oh, nice. I thought that was like part of the. But that was maybe my favorite part of my college education, honestly. Right. It was just really, really great. And I went to state, and then I took English classes at Berkeley. So I had oh. a real hodgepodge. Yeah. Yeah, it was weird. All I just kind of did. And then I did a, um, I finished my, I got my degree from state, but I finished at Cambridge University in England because I studied oh. Shakespeare. 
Oh, so. did you go over there for that? Mm -hmm. or, oh, yeah, wow. so I was there for a semester, which was really cool. Wow, so like I'm, I'm picturing a globe, and like you're going yeah. from the UK <laughs> back to here, but then when you're here, you're like East Bay. Yeah, yeah, SF, yeah. East I Bay, was SF. all over yeah. the place. It did was you very live in the weird. East Bay? Then, I lived or? in the East Bay, and then when I went to state, I moved to the Mission. So I lived oh, okay. in the Mission, so that okay. was a lot easier. That's the era we had just started talking yeah. about right before yeah, we yeah, started yeah, recording. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like. What year was it that you moved I up here? I guess that was two. Oh two. Yeah, oh two. Oh two. Yeah. Okay. So about about then, two thousand one, two thousand two. Two thousand two. For for those like I have an idea of my experience back mm -hmm. then, but like, mm -hmm. what did you think of the city then? I thought it was great. I'd been coming to the city a lot because, like I said, we lived in Orange County and we all didn't like it. So we used to come to San Francisco all the time. Like mm -hmm. we would always come. Um, to North Beach specifically, so I always kind of felt like I grew up in this neighborhood a little bit. Like yeah. we'd come for Thanksgiving, we'd come for Christmas. Um, and when I moved up here and I had friends at college, like at, from state, they were always like, how do you know the city so well? But I didn't really know the mission at the time. So when I moved to the mission, I thought it was fantastic mm -hmm. because it was and still is, I think. But, um, but yeah, I loved it. It was great. I just like, you know, I was 21, I guess, and just lived on 18th and Linda. Um, oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I just, it was awesome. Like That's I, like between Guerrero and Yeah, between and Guerrero and Valencia. Yeah, 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 Dolores. The, over the, yeah, okay. Yeah, I lived there, um, or between, between by that Guerrero and Valencia. By that community pool. Right? Yes, it's up yeah, from yeah. there. It's by the women's, the old women's building. Women's building, right, so right, right. the women's building now, I guess. Right. Um, but it was very, like, real world. Like, yeah. I had six roommates. Yeah. They were all, I didn't know any of them. You know, it was you, super Was it a funny. Craigslist thing? I think it was yeah. Craigslist. Yeah. And I think my room was, like, $400. And are you friends with any of those people I, now? Um, no, actually. Oh, okay. There's one woman who I lived with who oh, we are five. still, like, friendly. Like, sure. I mean, if we, like, if I saw her, I would be very excited. But the rest of the people, I think... Like, there's one roommate we had, and I swear to God, I have no idea. I'm like, I can't remember. <laughs> Who they were. It was like, <laughs> Jared, Alan, Nicole, Aliza. Aliza's the one that I'm still friendly with. And then I think there was another one. And, like, they're completely gone. I have no yeah. idea. I don't know. They were. It was an interesting group, though, because it was... I was the youngest, and I remember I thought everyone was so old. And the oldest right. person was probably, like, 31. Right. Like, you know. Ancient. They're so old. <laughs> yeah. What are they even doing? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've sometimes recently... Because um, I now haven't had roommates other than my significant other yeah. for a while. Thank whoever. But, yeah. um, like, just thinking back of, like, my yeah. roommate history, and I'm like, it'd be cool if we could have roommate trading cards. Oh, my God. And also, um, like, a percentage or a batting average yeah. of how many of your past roommates are you actually yeah. still friends with. It's usually pretty low. I, I had like. two roommates. So I moved from um, the Mission to the Lower Hate, and I had two roommates, Steve and Jessica, who are still two of my closest friends. Love them. Are they a couple? Um, but we met. With each other? No, uh, -uh. Oh. Jessica is married, and Steve li moved to Brooklyn. So Steve okay. lives in Brooklyn. But I still see Steve because I go see my sister, and we're all buds. And I still see nice. Jessica and like her kids and her husband and stuff. So, nice. um, yeah. So I lucked out. I only had the one really weird living situation, and then I moved <laughs> in with those guys. Uh, Steve moved to Brooklyn. We had a couple roommates after that, but Jessica and I are still very close friends. Um, we were friends when we moved in together, and then uh, then I moved to the place I live now. Like. 13 years ago. So I've lived by myself for what 13 years. What neighborhood are you in? I live up on Powell, so I'm like up oh, on Knob Hill. On the hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is great and awful because there's, oh. it's a hill in every direction and there's no grocery store. But oh. it's okay. You make it work. There there's was, that Trader Joe's. That there's a the Trader Cala. Joe's. Yeah, that's still there. Is that the closest it's maybe? It's the closest one. Yeah. Um, it's always insane in there. There used to oh, be I've a corner store that was like a block and a half down from my house that was a real saving grace of like, oh God, I don't have any eggs or like, I yeah. don't have this. And it closed. Oh. I believe because um, in the last like quote unquote storms the guy who owned it who was probably like our age had this white Audi that he was obsessed with okay. and he would park it in front and he was very proud of the Audi he always okay. talked about the Audi and then one night during the storms I was taking a lift home because I was like I can't walk I can't take Bart a walk this is like it was when like all the trees were falling last year yeah or earlier this year earlier yeah, this year yeah, yeah. and we were driving up Powell Street and I looked over and one of the huge cars was on top of his Audi and I swear to God they moved out like three days later and I was like God damn it he's just like so I'm I think done. he was like that's it my pride and wow. joy has literally been crushed before oh, my eyes man. so yeah so now there's no corner another story, victim but, but it's a great it's a good neighborhood I like it it's fun <laughs> are you close at all um, and I'm still embarrassingly oh, I've yeah. never been to Swenson's Swenson's it's is a little there. over the hill yeah that's okay. more like Russian hill I think okay. but it's cute yeah 
I've been here for 23 years, and for some stupid go, fucking cute. reason, yeah, it's we cute. had one. I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. We had a Swenson's. Oh, yeah. It's like, good. It, it, I, I've never been to, what's the one in the Mission? Mitchell's? Oh, yeah, Mitchell Brothers. I've or, never not been. Not Mitchell Brothers. That's, Sorry, that's, that's, that's something I else. I almost said Mitchell Brothers, <laughs> and I was like, that's not ice cream. They serve but corn ice cream. something <laughs> yes. no, like Mitchell's, that. Yes. Uh, uh, I've never been there. San Jose or whatever. Yeah, I've never been there, which is so weird. It, like I my love. boyfriend works at Thrill House and we are always oh, in that yeah. area and he's like how have you never been to Mitchell's and I'm like I've just never done it and at this point I'm sort of like it's like I've never seen Pretty Woman or The Notebook and oh, I'm like maybe I, I so should just movies. not maybe I'll just make it my whole life I've never seen Moonstruck oh that's my cool wife is know. mad at me about it's that it's a really good like, movie <laughs> but like The Notebook I'm like I don't it's care. nothing against the movies it's just like yeah. who has time to see all the movies I know and oh, everyone's God. like you were born in 1982 and you haven't seen Pretty Woman and I'm like no I've never seen the whole thing I've never seen it all the way yeah I've never seen Game of Thrones Oh, okay. Yeah, I, there's a lot of things I missed. Yeah, I was in college for a long time. I can't judge anyone that says these <laughs> yeah. things. Like, I'm like, I don't know. I, I have my litany yeah. of things I, I've yeah. never done. And but, I would say, like, with ice cream. Yeah. I don't know about you. Like, we're, we talked about aging out of yeah. New Year's Eve. I've aged out of. I can eat ice cream anytime. Oh yeah, no. Now it's like a specific cream. My first job was at Baskin Robbins. Oh shit. And ever since then, I'm like not a big ice cream fan. Yeah. I just like ruined it. It'll I think. change it. Totally. It was just like this sucks, totally. and I hate it. And then I just yeah, I don't know. I'm a big pie lady. Like okay. Pie. Do you not eat ice cream at all? I will, but like it's not. I'm more of a like. Potato chip, like if I'm oh. gonna if I'm gonna go junk, I'm like I like a like salt and vinegar potato chip. Okay, well I'm, like um, a, a I'm not gonna one. tell you to see any movie, but I will say, put Mitchell's on your list. Oh yeah, it's, I'll do that. Yeah. It's just like a, an essay. I'll go. I'll take a picture and send it to you. Yeah, please. <laughs> I went. Please do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Free advertising. For yeah, exactly. Five listeners. I mean, <laughs> the line speaks volumes. Correct. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's. I guess so. We talked about. Peralta College, yeah, yeah, yeah. SF State, mm-hmm. and Cambridge. Like, let, how did this happen? So, I actually started coming to this bar when I was a little young. Okay. Um, so, but then I, I actually was working up the street at a restaurant. Which and one? I was at this stinking rose, oh, which yeah. I cannot believe yeah, I'm yeah. admitting, uh, but I wore a garlic tie. Ooh. It was like real weird. Um, but I worked there. My friend Hillary, at the time, Hillary Meisenheimer, she's married now, but she was a hostess there. And she was like, you have to get a job here. We make a lot of money. It's great. Oh. And I said, well, I know North Tourist Beach. Money. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. sure, I'll do that. Yeah. So I was a hostess, I think. Um, basically, really, really weird. Like, I came back from Ireland. I wanted to get a bartending job. I couldn't get a bartending job because I wasn't 21. Oh, right. So I was like, I can get a bar backing job. And I was mm-hmm. still, I was living in the East Bay. I was living in Oakland at the time. So I got a job as a bar back at Albany Bowl, which oh, yeah. was the shit. Yeah. Like I worked with this woman named Chris. She was super mean, um, <laughs> but she was really helpful. She like she taught me all sorts of things. I became really good at like learning all of these. You know, it was a bowling alley, so I learned like all the dumb drinks, which was great. Um, and then I simultaneously was working at I think I think at the same time I was working at the Stinking Rose. And then when I turned 21, I started bartending over there. Okay. And as much as I really despise that job, um, I will always say that that job made me such a fast bartender because the bar is about the size of this table. Right. And the bartender does everything. Right. They make sodas. They make refills. They make cappuccinos. They make every cocktail. They pour all wine. the wine. They do mm-hmm. everything aside from water. Okay. And it was like a nightmare scenario because it was the first place I've ever worked that had drink tickets. Oh. So you would have Spitting a out to room you. full of people getting yeah. drinks from you. Yeah. Um, which, you know, and people eating at the bar, which I was like, fuck. Yeah. Um, I always forgot about that. Like, yeah. the eating at the bar. I, lo- I love eating at a bar, so I, yeah. can't, I can't throw some Same. shade. But yeah. as the bartender, I was always like, oh, God, and then there's this? Like, yeah. I just didn't, I, I've never Be been great at that. Be good to your I know, exactly, everyone. exactly. I, would, I am not good at that. I'm always like, every time I've had to do it, I feel like an actress. And I'm like, mm. how would you like your burger? Like, I don't, I forget oh. silverware. I'm like, bartending, I'm pretty on it. Serving food. Yeah. while bartending I just it's too much for they're me, different beasts it's right? just it's the they're people different. that do it I'm like you are very talented speaking of um, our first guest oh on yeah, this Rebel. podcast he, he's, he's, the he's the best he's the best and yeah. he's also like the sweetest man yes. while he does it which I'm like how are you still so nice how are you not like freaking out but um, yeah. so I would do that and then I would have this this machine to my left I guess that would just spit out like 
hundreds, it felt like, of drink yeah, tickets. So yeah. you, it was really like sink or swim. And yeah. you didn't have anyone else back there because it was too small. So, um, well, I feel like so, now, now people are more people have seen the bear yeah and that one episode when oh, they get God. the thing yeah it but, was like that every day but i think almost. the important difference here is that they had a crew oh no and you're, yeah, you're about, alone you were one you're absolutely getting all alone. those fucking you're tickets. totally alone um it was madness nuts. it was really crazy yeah. um then basically the the owners of that place there were some things there that you know again as like a pretty staunch feminist lady i was a little like hmm this yeah. seems off so <laughs> I would come down here after work and basically drink like, you know, a pint of old overholt and be like, I'm going home now to my apartment in the mission with my six stranger roommates. Right, so right. Um, one night I got in this huge fight with the manager who was problematic. And I basically found out that I had just redone the entire bar there and they had given credit to a guy who worked there who was essentially a food runner and a bar back. Um, which is fine, like that. That he that that was his job. He was a great guy. I had right. nothing to do with him. But, Not fine. Um, him but credit. I was like, excuse me, what? And he said, right. well, yeah, you know. And it, he's like, politics or feats. There was some bullshit answer. Mm -hmm. And I, in the middle of the, there's like a dining room, and I was like, I basically was like, what the fuck? This oh, is good. this is bullshit. And yeah. I was like, I'm fucking leaving. And I like closed out and I left. But of course, I was like 21 years old and still a service industry person and didn't want to fuck over my coworkers. So I came down That's here. That's good of you. I got a drink and um, and this woman, Libby, who worked here at the time, she was a cocktail waitress, said, we need a server. And I was like, I put my drink down and said, I'll be right back. And I went up and I gave them two weeks oh my because, God. you know, I was like, I'm yeah. still going to be nice. Yeah. So I gave them two weeks and then I started cocktailing here and I was 21. That was Joanna Liocci, bartender at Vesuvio Cafe. We'll be dropping part four of our Vesuvio episodes this Thursday, when Joanna will talk about the bar's wacky Wednesday music shows. Check for that later this week, wherever you get podcasts. Music for Storied San Francisco was produced, performed, and curated by Otis McDonald. Michelle Kilfeather does original photography for us. Aaron Lim of Bitch Talk Podcast is our contributing producer. And the show is produced and hosted by me, Jeff Hunt. Now in our sixth season, we have more than 200 episodes available on our website, storiedsf.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you're able to, please rate and review the show, and drop us a line at storiedsf at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Keep rejecting those silly doom loop narratives about our city. Stay wacky, weird, healthy, and creative. And we'll see you next time on Storied San Francisco. We acknowledge and respect the first humans of the unceded land we call San Francisco, the Ramaito Shaloni. We condemn the genocide of these and other tribes across the Western Hemisphere. We honor their legacy and history and we support rematriation and sovereignty efforts. This podcast is a proud member of the BFF.FM podcast network. Learn more at podcasts.bff.fm. BFF.FM, best frequencies forever.